Rusty Ward. I'm Kevin Marr. And you're watching So Bad It's Good, where we review movies and let you know if they're just plain bad, or if they're so bad, you have to see them. Today's installment is part one of a double feature dedicated to the evil dogs of 1978. We're going to be looking at Zoltan, Hound of Dracula. Right now, Michael Drake hasn't a care in the world. He's off on a camping holiday in California with his wife and two children, plus two dogs and a litter of puppies. What Drake doesn't know is that there are skeletons in his family closet, and the bones are about to start rattling with a vengeance. You see, his name isn't really Drake. In the old country, it's pronounced Dracula. You are the only direct descendant. He wants your blood. Now there's a nice doggy, but before you pet it, take a good look. It might be a friend of Zoltan, Hound of Dracula. This trailer is so long, and I still don't really know what's going on. We cut it down for you because this is the Apocalypse Now director's cut of the Hound of Dracula trailer. I think what the trailer wants to convey is that the movie tells the story of Dracula's dead dog that comes back to life, goes to America, and tries to find the last remaining member of the Dracula clan, who's living in California under the name Michael Drake. This movie was also released under the title Dracula's Dog, but could have also been called Vampire's Best Friend. Basically, after The Omen, someone decided that the dog in that was so scary, it deserved its own movie. The film also answers the age-old question, can dogs become vampires? No, he's one of us. As well as, can dogs have flashbacks? Zoltan. 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 This may have been the inspiration for the dog flashback in The Hills Have Eyes Part 2. Which officially makes this a groundbreaking film. Like a lot of good vampire movies, it features a vampire hunter, in this case played by Academy Award winner Jose Ferrer, who goes throughout the entire movie seeming very, very bored. He was bored being in this movie, and we were bored watching him in this movie. At one point, we even see him rent a car in real time. Uh, convertible. Yes, this is yours. Please. Oh, he's got the car, he's gonna leave. Oh no, there's another form he has to sign. Will you sign right here, please? Be happy to. The DVD has deleted scenes of him picking out <laughs> socks. Another character in the film is Dracula's assistant, who helps Zoltan find Dracula's descendant. And this guy is one of the scariest actors I've ever seen in film. He's so scary that they padded the film with five minutes of his face. <laughs> And if you're a vampire's assistant trying to remain inconspicuous while going into a state park, maybe don't drive a hearse. I'm just gonna bury this guy in Yosemite. It's cool. What what ranger allows like you got any got any dead bodies in there? No, just a dog in a coffin, totally alive. <laughs> Another groundbreaking moment in this film is the most adorable vampire turning ever. <laughs> And then, as if it couldn't get any cuter, they bury the dead puppy, only to have it crawl out of the grave. If only the rest of the movie were that exciting. Uh, this has been called the worst Dracula movie ever made. I wouldn't go that far, but I wouldn't recommend it either. Rusty, what'd you think? Well, it doesn't make me angry like the Twilight movies do, so I can't say it's the worst Dracula movie ever, but it's not very good, and other than a few scenes, not really a lot of fun. Puppy. Maria! What's the dog? It was the dog. The dog next door that forced him to kill all those people. 